In this video I'm going to take a look at the extrude command. Now this is a really useful command and probably its best use is for creating seam blends. It will give us a nice easy parallel uh, set of faces to add a seam blend to. But it's also used to create walls, posts, cliffs, all sorts of things in 3D. So we'll just take a look at the command now. If I go to terrain, I'll put it on face. Up here, this looks like a cage to me, is the extrude command. And it's showing what's actually happening. It's a little picture showing uh, a face being pulled out of the terrain. And the white area here is new faces that are created at the same time. So I'll show you that. It'll be clear if I just show you on the terrain. So I'm going to mark off an area, turn it to fairway so we can see it. And I'll zoom in. So I've got an area here now. If I sharpen the perimeter of this, it will make it a lot easier to see what's going on. So I'm just going to make a sharp edge to set that to minus one. And let's put our camera up close on the perspective view. So here's our area. So if I click back on the face, we've got the faces selected, whatever faces are selected will be extruded. So I've got all this area selected at the moment. So I'm going to click on extrude and in the perspective view, I'm going to click and hold and then drag up and down. And you'll see it's pulling the land up and down and you'll see a red area being created as well. Now this is a new set of faces if I let go of that there. If I hold the mouse wheel down, you'll see there's some new faces now being created around the edge. They're red because it hasn't applied a texture yet, so the texture on them is going to be set to none. So if I select this area, if I go to select region and click on that area, so I select it, you'll see none is now highlighted in red and we can add a texture to it so we could make this I'll make this something that I can change back easy I'll set it to say desert for now apply and it's added that texture around the edge now what you will notice is this texture looks very odd and stripy now this is because APCD always applies default textures to the floor, so it's going to apply a texture flat on the floor. This face is at 90 degrees, so we really want to apply the texture rotated round and apply it as if we were putting wallpaper on a wall. Our texture needs to be in the same alignment as the uh, face, but what's happening is it's still putting a texture horizontally as if it's a floor so we're just getting a sliver of the texture and it's just being repeated again and again and again all the way through a bit like uh, the layers in a stick of rock it's just going all the way through so we need to tell APCD that the texture is really on its edge and to do that we have to apply mappings and I'll be showing you that in the next video but for now we're just going to carry on looking at extrusions and uh, you'll see I've got what I've got is a vertical uh, wall created by that extrusion but if this was slanting I shall select these verts I'll just select an area a bit larger than the area I've selected if I now go to tilt and we'll zoom out a bit we'll just tilt this up at an angle 
Now if I add a smaller area, let's go to our terrain painter. If I just add got a smaller area in the middle here so if I face this with another texture let's make this sand again I'll edge sharpen the edge of it with the perimeter if I extrude this face extrude and pull it up, 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 up. What you'll see is, it's actually not going up vertically. It's going up at the angle of the ground that it's on. So when you extrude, it always extrudes to the angle that the average of all the verts it's extruding are. So. This is a good thing for some things. It gives you uh, lots of options. You can extrude out sideways. Uh, so you can create all sorts of great things. But it also can cause a few problems. If you're, for instance, you're extruding a wall and the ground is all uneven and on a side of a hill, you don't want your wall leaning over. Or if you're creating a building, the same thing. You don't really want your building coming out like this, leaning over. So what do you do? Well, it's quite simple. If I undo our extrude there, what you do is click the extrude on the faces. So instead of holding and dragging, just use the top view and click and let go. Now that's extruded and it's created a new set of verts, but we can't see them because they're laying exactly on the same points as the original verts. But because they're there now and the new faces along the side are there too, if we go to move, we can move this face now on this screen in the Z axis. If I just pull it up, you'll see the faces have been created. We couldn't see them. But it's now, because we're on the z-axis, we're moving that in the z-axis. So we've got nice vertical sides. And of course, if we wanted our top horizontal, we just select the area on this screen, click the flatten command, and it will flatten out the area that's selected, which is the top. So we've got a nice flat top so that's quite a useful uh, thing to know so the next thing I want to talk about is if we wanted to extrude an area outside of this area so if I now Select another area. And let's make this something else. So let's make it asphalt for now. We'll deselect everything. So I've got this area of asphalt now, and I want to extrude this down slightly. We'll see some of the problems that occur. So I've got my area. I'll do the usual. I'll just sharpen it so that we can see what we're doing. So I'll go edge, select, perimeter. I'll select the uh, edges of the asphalt and I'll sharpen it again to minus one. So I've got my area now of asphalt and I want to extrude it down. But what we'll find when I go to phase and select this region and I click on extrude when I click on the area I just get a can't do it 
noise. It won't let me extrude this area. Now this is because there's a hole in the middle and an extrusion has to be continuous. This has to all be solid for you to be able to extrude because we've got a hole like a, a donut effect. It won't let us extrude this shape because of this area inside that isn't selected. So what we have to do is select this inner area as well. So if we hold the shift key down, if I do it just on the top view, uh, select region, if I do it just on the top view, it will all look selected here. But we've also got these vertical faces that we've created now so it still won't let us extrude because of these areas that aren't selected so we need to select these areas as well so it's easier to select all your areas on your perspective view and if you've got every area so that it's completely solid and selected we'll now find that we can extrude down so if I go back to extrude it's now allowing me to extrude the whole piece down. Now, this is going to show up another problem. As soon as I let go of this and look around at our previous area, uh, it's gone a bit weird. Now, this is the other problem with extruding. Anything on an extrusion, any sharp edges, any path maps, seam blends, will also be destroyed if they're on a piece of terrain that's extruded. So all our sharp edges have turned to zero again. So it, we'd have to manually go round and sharpen all the edges that were sharp before to get back to where we were. So this is where a bit of forward planning is needed. If you're going to uh, be building things and you're going to use combinations of sharp edges, uh, soft edges, you really need to make sure if you're going to do any extrusions, you do those first because otherwise all your work with your edges is going to be destroyed. And the same with paths. Paths and blends aren't quite so bad. If you've put a blend in, if this was say a, a seam blend, um, although the seam blend would be messed up, it's quite a simple matter to select it and reapply it and it will be fine. Uh, you just got to go around and reapply them. Sharp edges though uh, could be more of a problem because you might have had a sharp edge of three in one place and two, then a one, a zero to create the effect you want. There might be a complex uh, combination of edges and you can't just simply reapply those you've got to go one by one uh, redoing all your work so try to do your extrusions first um, I'm saying this now because because this method of extruding down is ideal for putting in seam blends because we need a set of parallel faces to add a blend to and an extrusion a very small extrusion down is the best uh, method to do this you really need to try and put those in first. We won't be able to seam blend them straight away, but you can replace this none texture with a temporary uh, texture until you get round to seam blending. You don't want to use the same texture as there is around. So if, if we've extruded this down, we don't want to make this face asphalt or rough because they're next to it. Because if we do, they'll all become part of the same texture. So if we make this rough, it won't be a separate entity anymore. It will just be part of this one. And we can't then select it back again, because if we select the region, it will select the whole lot. So I'll just show you what I mean. If I, if I region select this as rough, make it rough. Now that it's rough, uh, I can't actually select it because 
it's thinking this is all rough as well so it's just selecting everything I'd have to manually go around selecting the faces which take forever so you don't want to do that so if you're going to use to do some extruding and you're going to use this later as a scene blend then the thing to do is temporarily replace it with a, a texture that's not being used anywhere else so uh, let's just undo what I've done let's control and Z and be quicker so yeah it's at none so if I was going to use this as a scene blend later for now I would just fill it with something that will look okay because I'm going to be testing my course so I don't want it to be made of sand or something because it's going to affect the testing so I would try and find a, another rough texture uh, something similar that I wasn't using 